What's up everybody, Dr. Ray, and in this video, I'm gonna go through how you organize a course, module, piece of e-learning content, face-to-face -face course, whatever it is that you are developing, whatever kind of training, I'm gonna go through and explain how you organize it. Now, first, why is this important? Why is course organization important? Because you don't just like develop a course. Like there are people out there that have literally spent lots of time researching the best ways to organize a course so that you don't have to sit there and do it. You don't reinvent the wheel. You don't just like develop training. You gotta, how are you organizing it? What is the structure? Like what is the skeleton? What is the framework? It's one thing I always ask people on an interview, like, well, how did you organize this? What model did you use to organize this course? All right, so up on the screen, boom, it's up on the screen. Um, I have two different strategies two of the most popular strategies, and then my general strategy where I kind of break down how all courses are organized. All right, and we're gonna go through them. Um, so let me kind of go through my, my general strategy, my four-part general strategy here, um, which is basically when you're organizing a course, you have some kind of introduction, you have content presentation and learning. This is where like you're actually like delivering the content and somehow getting the people to actually learn it. So like what instructional strategies are you using to get people to learn? Um, then we have our assessment where we somehow assess like projects or whatever we're doing, tests. How are we assessing learning? And then we have our utilization and practice. And that's where like we're making sure like can these people really use what I gave them on the job? Is it successful? Like, we're, we're, can they actually apply this somehow? Like, how do we get them to really apply what I just presented to them? All right, so let's talk about how you actually do this. So you, on the left-hand side, you see my general strategy. And then on the right, you see Gagne's nine events and Dick and Carrie's model. Now, Dick and Carrie is not like we say Dick and Carrie's another version of Addy. This is how they, this is their organizational strategy. So what I'm presenting here is called an organizational strategy. It's how you organize your course. We have organizational strategies, which are how we organize courses. Our delivery strategies, which are how do we get people to learn like game-based learning, problem-based learning, that kind of thing. And then we have our development strategies, which are like, uh, you know, multimedia principles, HCI, uh, Fitz Law, all that kind of stuff. Like, you know, that kind of, how like interface stuff. So, Today I'm going through the organizational strategy. How are we organizing a course? So I wanna go through, just ex briefly go through Gagne's nine events and explain how similar they are to my general strategy and Dick and Carrie, because it's nice to see them like all parallel to one another. And I could put like 10 more organizational strategies up here, but they're all broken down into the four ways, like the four categories that I've broken them down in. So to organize a course, the most popular method, by hands down, most popular method, you should have this on your resume somewhere, is Gagne's nine events. How do I organize, what did you use to organize the seed learning module? What did you learn to, I use Gagne's nine events. Or what you really do as, in a, as a practitioner is you take something like Gagne's nine events, which is proven through research to be a successful way to de design a course. And you say, you know, every project I work on is, yes, I used, I used a modified version of Gagne's nine events to develop this e-learning module. That's what it is. So we have this introduction. In Gagne's, that means gain attention. In Dick and Carrie, he also gains, they also gain attention. Inform the learning or learner of the objective. Oh, Dick and Carrie does it too. And simulate recall. Oh, basically Dick and Carrie and Gagne's nine events are exactly the same. And that's why I call this the introduction phase. This is where we're introducing the content to the learner. So the first thing you do is you introduce the content to the learner. You gotta get them excited, super excited to attend this training. Super excited to attend this training is not like, oh my gosh, I, I swear like 99% of trainings that I see, I wanna fall asleep when I see their introduction. And that's not cool. Tell me why it's relevant. Like, what is the meaning of this? Like, why is it relevant? Like, look at ARC's motivation model. Figure, like, how do you get people motivated to uh, want to learn? All right, next part, our content presentation. So Gagne has present materials, provide learning, guidance, and facilitate, and then feedback. Dick and Carrie, content presentation, examples, practice, feedback. Very much the same. Basically, what we're trying to do here is get people, we're giving them the content, we're also getting them to learn. Now the getting them to learn portion 
is our delivery strategy. So when I asked someone in an interview, tell me your organizational strategy. Oh, I used Gagne's nine events. Well, how did you get people to learn? Or what were your delivery strategies? Well, I chunked the information. I used game-based learning. Um, we had like some case studies. What did we do to get people to learn this stuff? Oh, well, it was just simple recall. They just had to recall the information. So we had them play like this little game where they had to like memorize the word, whatever it is. All right, so we got the, how do we get them to learn? So that's what we're doing here. We're presenting them information, getting them to learn. A lot of what I see out there, when I say I see a lot of bad training, because I talk about this in my videos a bunch, is that there isn't that get them to learn. A lot of people have skipped the delivery strategies for some reason and just presented content. If I'm just presenting someone content, I might as well hand them an encyclopedia article and just say, read this. If that's all you're doing, you just created like a presentation of an encyclopedia article. No, how did you get them to learn? All right, after we've done that part, we assess them to make sure they can do it. Uh, Gagne just described this as assessment performance, and Dick and Carrie described this step as a pre-test, post-test. But the idea is we're getting them to learn. How did we get them to learn? And how do we know they learned it? I like that pre-test, post-test, because we have pre-post. We can gauge the responses pre and post. All right. And finally, how did we enhance transfer? Um, enhance retention and transfer. And um, Dick and Carrie described this as memory aids for transfer, for retention and transfer. How did we get them? Can they use it on the job? Like, do we have some kind of like trial? Um, what are they doing? How are they practicing it? What, how are they using this? Like if it's a piece of software, we have them go through like a sandbox version, but that's how you organize a course. You have some kind of introduction, some kind of content present, presentation and some type of way to get the people to learn. We have some type of assessment and some type of way to reinforce that, like have them practice through like utilization, transfer, retention. This is called your organizational strategy. So when someone asks you, what organizational strategy did you use for this piece of training? I used Gagne's nine events. Oh, I used a modified version of Gagne's nine events. Oh, I used whatever it happens to be. But you need to, you don't just make it up yourself. Pick a real strategy and then modify it for your use so you know you're following best practices. Do not reinvent the wheel. All right. Hope you learned something from this video. Later, all.